All right, and here we go from rehearsal C, and we found love. So we came out of that kind of squirrely passage where we were in the third position and then to the fourth. <laughs> And here we are at letter C. Now, it's just uh, first finger on the G. Now, when you put this B flat on, it's next to the one. But don't be silly. Put it on both strings, okay? Don't just put it on the G string, even though that's what it's calling for. If you look one note past that, you'll see that the B flat and the F are together, right? So, when you go... When you put this B flat on, cover both strings. It's called covering your fifth because it's five notes apart. If you have that nicely in tune, then you just add your three. And remember, don't worry about bowings while we're going through the fingerings. If you left your two on like you were supposed to, well, you had to, right? The one is right next to that and you're going to kind of take that first finger, put it right next to the two, and then you have to move the two over just slightly to clear the G string so that the two and the one, which you're going to play together, are separated, right? Um, you're, not, you're not dangling your two over onto the G string like it just was a second ago. So... Okay. Um, tricky, though, because... Your two can't be touching the G, but it also can't be touching the A, because we're about to go. All right, so um, you really have to be precise with that, or you'll get like a little whistling. Maybe if you're new to double stops, yours sounds like. That doesn't sound good. So, um... all right, so that's that lick right there. Um, then we have our three coming up. Again, be smart. Take that third finger and put it so it's covering both the G and the D. Okay, now um, it, this is just a bowing technique where you play a single string to double stop. All right, now into the meat of this passage. Um, such a beautiful passage when Rihanna's singing it. We really want to do it justice, um, which is... Right? So, um, but we have to impart the harmony at the same time, right? And it's a lot easier than you might think. It's just a lot of back and forth with the bow. So, let's get the fingerings, which are one on the G, open D, two on the A. So, you have to clear all those strings. The G, the open D, can't have anything touching it, and then the two. And if you are sounding like this, it means your one is dangling over onto the D string, so make sure it's clear. All right, so the first note, this is these two measures, these really tough measures. We have this first D open, one on the G, two on the A. Back to the one in the open. And then you quickly have to take your one and move it over to the low one position on the A. Okay, so. And then two on the G, Clearing. It's not technically a double stop, that B flat, but you're going to kind of smear it together, right? So. The next one is two, three, and then you kind of have to reposition your whole hand for that one, two, especially since. out of tune. I was out of tune. I can't hear you. Okay. Um, I'll do that again slowly, that passage. This is uh, rehearsal C, one, two, three after rehearsal C. Notice that I leave my notes kind of together as double stops, and 
Um, it's always tricky when you write something like this out because it changes and it's going so fast you can't really hear it, you know. So, but definitely I like um, that last note in measure 16. Um, I leave it on, that C with the F. Okay, but truth is I get off of it so fast because I'm about to do this high grab and if you don't know the grab then uh, you're about to hear it, so we just reach up. It's not a note, it's an effect, so. It's a lot of fun. The goal is to kind of create a uh, dissonant effect, so you kind of have to get your chin on the violin pretty good because we're about to jump way high up. You do not have to hit a specific note. I like to take my third finger and put it over the G and the D or the D and the A strings. Um, you'll notice the footnote in the music says the D and the A. Um, and that is probably what I do in this case. Um, and it sounds like crap, right? I mean, oh, sorry. Um, it, it sounds terrible because it's supposed to. It's an effect that only makes sense in context um, when you go so practice that a bunch of times and make sure that you're not playing it literally or um, you'll read that footnote you will sound like a fool if you go um, okay that's not what we're doing it's an effect right and I can afford to talk for so long about these difficult measures. Why? Because you know what's coming up, right? The exact same thing that you just did. This music is full of repetition, okay? Those, are, those two measures are exactly the same as measures 13 and 14, right, right at C, right? So after the grab, we've already done this. So the challenge is going to be to find... And that's really what this part of the violin is for. You're sliding, your thumb comes down, and it bumps into this kind of stop. And sometimes you'll go too far, you'll go a little too low, sometimes you'll go a little too high. Um, um, good news is you have three notes to fix it, right? Yeah, so um, try to hit it on the first one if you can. And then um, this, these last two measures. Of that chord is actually the same chord as we did, which is immediately above it. Um, however, it's a quarter note, right? Little remnant from the very beginning, right? So um, I'll play through this again kind of uh, slowly. Um, paying attention to the bowings and some of the accents, and um, you can kind of try to play along with it. Um, here we go from C, and I'm going to start um, one note before C, so we get that transition right into the letter C. There's a decrescendo at the very end right there. Um, not because they do that in Rihanna's song, but because we're setting up um, kind of a heightened layer of excitement in this next one. So um, email me at adamdegraff at yahoo.com if you have any questions. Make a video of yourself playing it, and you, know, you can put it up on my Facebook page, or um, I'll make some comments on that. And um, just remember, when you're practicing, slow, careful, listen carefully, make sure you're, um, you know, what you see on the page doesn't kind of override what you're hearing, okay? You need to make sure, it, you know, it sounds right to you, and save for the performance that kind of reckless abandon. And I, and I want you to play that way when you're performing. Um, just remember to keep them separate from practicing, okay? I'll see you for the next tutorial.